budget amendment. Bob Dole wanted one. President Clinton is opposed to a balanced budget amendment, but it's clear this man has beating in his blood campaign finance reform. You know, Ross Perot did not tonight, as far as we can tell, carry the voters that voted for him in 1992. He managed to energize the issue of campaign reform in the last days, but most of the voters, more of the voters of plurality, voted for him in 92, went for Bob Dole this time. That's right. In fact, we have the figures right here. The uh, Perot voters from 92 went 45 percent for Bob Dole, 30 percent, less than a third, stayed with Ross Perot. Only 23 percent went for Bill Clinton, who won the election anyway, but he won it without really carrying very much of the Perot vote. This it looks like Perot's message on campaign finance reform got through, but it produced votes for Dole, not for Perot. It's interesting. He talks about campaign finance reform. In fact, he did take, he's the beneficiary of the current system. He took, what, $30 million in uh, federal money uh, to run his campaign. Which probably was a mistake, don't you think? Well, if he he, had... in, the, in that he, it, taking that amount of money meant that he could only spend, what, 50000 right. of his own dollars right. on this campaign. In 1992, he got 19% of the vote, but he spent... Sixty-five million dollars. He, he took the money, money so he could get into the debates. He thought that would instantly qualify him to be in the debate. He's publicly subsidized, and they kept him out of the debate. Time out. <laughs> Our coverage will continue in a moment. We're not really fighting. <laughs> we never fight. Governor's race? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got well, CNN is calling a race, the governor's race in West Virginia. It's a Republican pickup. We're saying that Cecil Underwood, 73 years old, first won the governorship in that state in 1957. At 73, he is going back. He will be the nation's oldest governor. That is a Republican pickup. And he was the nation's youngest governor, or at least West Virginia's mm -hmm. youngest governor, Virginia, when yeah. he was elected governor in 1956. Talk about your comeback. Uh, let me just say one thing. <laughs> he's, 70, he's 74. Today is his birthday. Today is his birthday. Is by his the birthday. way, he That's defeated right. Happy Charlotte. Happy birthday, Cecil Underwood. <laughs> he defeated Charlotte Pritt, the former state legislator in right. West Virginia. William Jefferson Clinton, four more years. How did he do it? Well, let's take a look at the exit polls and see if we can find out. Everybody's been talking about the gender gap. So let's see what kind of gender gap we got. Now, look at men. Shame on them. Men couldn't make up their minds. You got men voting for Bill Clinton here. You got just as many men voting for Bob Dole. These men, you know, they just can't make up their minds. But how about women? Women. Ha! Women know who they want. Women clearly are for Bill Clinton. Majority of women. Now, this is the biggest gender gap we've seen in a presidential election ever in our exit polling. And if Bob Dole ends up carrying men, it would be the first time that men have voted for one candidate and women voted for the other candidate. Now, another important factor in Clinton's victory. Look at his move to the center. He carried the moderate vote very handily. This is important because while there are more conservatives than liberals, half of Americans call themselves moderate, and Bill Clinton dominated those mod that moderate category by nearly two to one. If there was any single issue that helped Clinton win, it has to be the economy. Now, look at this. About 45 percent, almost half the voters, said their financial situation has stayed about the same in the last four years. They split their vote evenly. 20 percent say, well, things have actually gotten worse, and they voted two to one for Bob Dole. But a third told us things have gotten better in the last four years, and let's take a look at how those people voted. That was where Clinton really built up his majority. Two-thirds of them say if their family was better off since 1992, two-thirds of those voters went for Bill Clinton. So the answer to Clinton's big victory in the presidential race today, people who were better off voted heavily for Bill Clinton. Was it Ronald <laughs> very, very Reagan who said in 1984, he was the first one to ask the question, are you in that debate with Jimmy Carter, are you better off, I mean, with, with, uh, with 1980, with Jimmy Carter, are you better off today than you were four years ago? And ever since then, that question has been asked in every single presidential election, are you better off? And well, it works. You've really Bill, gotten that little male and female signal <laughs> down pretty pat, haven't you, Bill? I want to get back to you on the question about the big gender gap in the history of our exit polling, but we're going to pause and we'll be right back with more of our coverage from CNN Center in Atlanta. Bill, I love you.
As the time zones shift from east to west and the polls close, let's check in with our congressional desk man, Frank Sesno, for the very latest on the 105th Congress. Frank? Well, Bernie, as it looked good for, uh, for Bill Clinton coming into the evening and going through the evening, so it looks pretty good for the Republicans right now. Certainly in the Senate, things are looking very solid there. In the state of Georgia, Max Cleland, the Democrat, picking up a win in the state of Georgia, beating Guy Milner. The Republicans had hoped to come back from behind in this one and uh, prevail, but they did not. Coming over to Bruce Morton now, looking at the state of Georgia, Bruce. It was a, it was a close one, it seemed, in the final days. Well, it was close. Uh, Guy Milner spent a lot of money, and uh, in the end, it all came down to, uh, to women. Men divided pretty evenly in Georgia. Women liked Max Cleland by a lot, and that was his margin of victory. In Alabama, another of those open southern seats, which went the other way, women split pretty evenly. Men went for the Republican, Jeff Sessions, and he was the winner. Uh, Louisiana, of course, is still out, but what we seem to know pretty certainly is that the Republicans are going to keep the Senate. We don't know the margin yet, but unless they lose every single seat that's still in play, they're going to control the Senate. Bruce, let me jump in here. I think we're going to come back in just a few minutes and finish all this congressional business up, but I believe there's some news brewing on the national desk, and if the time is right, we're going to go back there now. Indeed. Thanks, Frank. First to the West Coast, in California, CNN is declaring at this moment that President Clinton has won California's juicy 54 electoral votes, a state he worked very, very hard and repeatedly. Went there almost 30 times. Bob Dole put everything he had into the last few weeks in California, spent a million and a half dollars a week. It didn't work. The state of Washington, we can also say that Bill Clinton has won. This is a state that he won in 1992, Ken Bode, and uh, uh, more good news for the Democrats. It's a state that's, that's become more and more Democratic in presidential voting as time goes on, as are all of the states down this Pacific Rim, Washington, Oregon, California. 11 electoral votes in Washington and in Oregon. CNN declares at 11 o'clock tonight, President Clinton has won the state of Oregon. Seven electoral votes in Oregon going to Mr. Clinton. Strong environmental constituency in Oregon, and Clinton was strong on that issue. Perot did very well last time in Oregon. He got a quarter of the vote, but this time Clinton kept it as he did in 92. And the state of Hawaii, a state that has gone uh, Republican only twice since it became a state in 1959 for Bill Clinton. Not many electoral votes on Hawaii, but uh, again, it's like all of these states on the Pacific Rim. They are becoming more and more Democratic in presidential voting. Coming back to North Dakota, CNN declares that Bob Dole has won the state of North Dakota with three electoral votes. North Dakota is not on the Pacific Rim. It's an interior state. Hasn't voted for a Democrat since 1964, and it didn't do it this time. Voted for Bush in 92 and Clinton in 96. Uh, sorry, and, and uh, Dole in 96. <laughs> okay. Frank, right. we interrupted you, but we felt that you and our viewers wanted to know the very latest. Oh, Judy has another one. I think one. we've got I one apologize. more to call, and I need to see or get a cue from Bob, from Bob Fernand. Let's see, what is it? What are we calling now? Let's take a Gary look. Gary Locke. Ah, yes, uh, Gary Locke, the winner, we are declaring. The Democrat in uh, the state of Washington, he would be, will become the first Asian American governor in the United States. This is not a pickup for the uh, Democrats. This Mike Lowry was a Democrat and did not run again, so this is a... Okay, he, I just he, wanted to add he's the first Chinese-American on the mainland. First Asian-American governor on the mainland. He defeated uh, Ellen Craswell, who was a candidate very closely identified with the religious right in that state. Okay. Uh, Gary Locke, King County Executive. Frank, I was about to say we interrupted you, but we thought you and our viewers would like to know the very latest on those calls. Back to you. Thanks, Bernie. It's never an interruption. We were talking with Bruce Morton, though, and want to come back to that. Bruce, what's happened tonight, before we get into some of the specific races again, what's happened tonight is that the Republicans have picked up two Senate seats net. Okay, they came into the evening up three. That means they're now up five. Mathematically, the Democrats could still rally back and at least have a tie, but it looks pretty solid for the GOP. That's a, that's a real long shot. Uh, you know, I, the, the heavy odds against that. If we were in Nevada, I'd quote you some, but... Uh... But the efforts to nationalize this campaign, to link every Republican senatorial candidate with Newt Gingrich, to throw around words like extremist and the Medicare issue and all of that, appear not to have worked. There is ticket splitting, a great deal of it this evening. There's a lot of ticket splitting. The Republicans kept saying, uh, liberal, liberal is liberal as Ted Kennedy. And uh, the Democrats kept saying, I'm the moderate, uh, he's the extremist way over there. And there have been just a number of races in which that didn't work on both sides. You know, there hasn't been a, a wholesale change here. 
One place where liberal was not a dirty word, apparently, tonight, Bruce, is in the state of Minnesota. We are calling Paul Wellstone the winner there, the incumbent. Well, he did a remarkable thing. He, he ran as what he was, and uh, in fact, he's a liberal. He may be the most liberal sitting senator, but even those people in Minnesota who identify themselves as moderates went overwhelmingly for Mr. Wellstone. Another extraordinary thing about that, Ron, he's the only senator who was up this year who voted against the welfare bill on the grounds that it was too tough. But even those Minnesotans who thought it wasn't tough enough, a third of them voted for Wellstone. He must be doing something right. Okay, very good, Bruce. We're going to come back and talk some more about the Senate in just a bit. But what we want to talk about now is the ever-important House of Representatives. Coming into this evening, of course, it was a Republican House of Representatives, the famous 104th Congress, the House that Newt Gingrich built. The Republicans had a clear edge in the House of Representatives. If you take a look here at our graphics, which lay it all out for you, coming into the evening, the 104th Congress, the Republicans held a, a 236 seats. The Democrats here in blue, 198. What's happening tonight? Well, what's happening tonight is a very interesting scenario. What we can tell you at this time, there are still 142 seats that are undecided. This comes in, this come, these, comes, these seats come clo uh, slowly. Sorry about that. But the Republicans right now holding 153, the Democrats 138. In the uh, all-important, all important, all Ah, okay, let me just jump in here. We're going to hear from one of our uh, House uh, incumbents, a Democrat, Richard Gephardt, who would have been the Speaker of the House, we here speaking to his supporters. We have three wonderful children, and the proudest achievement in my life is not my public service, but the fact that we have raised three wonderful children, Matt, Chrissy, and Kate. I want to recognize Jane, my wife, who's my partner and makes my public service possible, and my mother, Lorraine, who's 88 years old and gave me the values, the South St. Louis values that I've grown up with and have made my public service. Now, when we lost the House of Representatives two years ago, it was a humbling loss. And I told my colleagues that we had to go out into the country, and as I have in my district, go door to door and talk to the people in the country and to try to find out what their concerns were because we had been humbled by our loss. We went. I went into the 3rd District, as I always do, door to door, and we listened to people. And it was from that listening that we developed our agenda that I believe the American people are listening to. We call it Families First, and I believe that agenda will win us a victory tonight in the House of Representatives. Dick Gephardt still holding out hope for a victory in the House of Representatives tonight, sounding a bit hoarse uh, from all the campaigning he's been doing, but there's a long road to, haul, uh, to, to travel there. We were looking at the uh, House Republican freshmen. They were supposed to be endangered. So far, 35 of them have been reelected. Five of them have lost. We were looking at uh, 19 open Democratic seats in the South. That's where the Democrats seem to be most vulnerable. So far, the Democrats have lost five of the seats they had held in the South. Right now, looking to be a pretty strong night for the Republicans as well. I understand we have Senator Strom Thurmond uh, in our crosshairs talking to his supporters in South Carolina. We go there now. And before Tony took over this campaign, uh, and before we got started, Mr. Mark Gooden came down and turned the thing around and got it going. Mark Gooden did a great job. <laughs> the campaign staff, <clears throat> and there's never been a, a finer working staff that's more loyal and more helpful than they are. The chairman, Tony Denny. Tony! Where is he? Come up here and let him see. 